Luke chapter 1. And we'll start off in verse 5. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Arba, or Ava. And his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. And they had no child, because that Elizabeth was barren, and they both were now well stricken in years. And I believe that's where we left off last time. No child means they were barren. And we looked at Sarah, we looked at Rebecca, we looked at Rachel, we looked at Manoah's wife, which would be the, the mother of Samson. And we looked at Hannah. Michael was made uh, barren because her rejection of her husband and God. But she did have children, but became barren before. The Shunammite woman. And we've looked at Genesis 16, 25, 30, Judges 13, 1 Samuel 1, 2 Samuel 6, and 2 Kings 4. Now what we see here in verse 7 is a carbon copy of Abraham and Sarah. And what you're going to see as we open Luke, we're going to see the Old Testament. We are not, we are not in the church age. And what you're going to see is a new beginning as Christ will come on the picture. The Jews were to see, hey, didn't this happen sometime before? Don't we recall about history? History is important to God that that is what your Bible is. History and prophecy. And we have the only God that can write history from the future. God already knows what's going to happen. Now about this thing. Hebrews 11, 11. This carbon copy. People probably don't even know what that word means anymore today. And you know what copy is. Is when you make a, a, a duplicate of a paper. Well, this is a duplicate of Abraham and Sarah. Hebrews 11.11 11. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age. Sarah had reached the time of her life where she was unable naturally to produce a child. Romans 4.19 We read Elizabeth was old and stricken. Romans 4.19 And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. When he was about a hundred years old. This is Abraham. Abraham's ability to produce seed at a hundred years old was dead. Neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Sarah conceiving a child was dead. There was no way. Nothing possible by man. As with Elizabeth. Now we turn to Genesis 17, 17. And it was so, such a story that when God told Abraham and God told Sarah, that the Bible records they had an Isaac. 
And you say, what do you mean they had an Isaac? They laughed. Both of them laughed. The man of God, the man that had faith in God, Abraham laughed. His wife laughed. Genesis 17, 17. Isaac means laughter. Look at verse 17, 17. Genesis. Then, it, well, let's read verse 15. And God said to Abraham, As for Sarai thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, make her happy, and give thee a son of her. Uh, she's a hundred years old. Romans and Hebrews in the New Testament records that she was dead in the womb. Her ability to produce eggs was done. And God said, I give thee a son also of her. The Bible says in Romans he was dead. When it came to producing a child. And yet God said. And give thee a son also of her. Yet will I bless her. And she shall be a mother of nations. It's impossible. Kings of people shall be of her. And it said in, in Hebrews, and it said in Romans, that Abraham believed God. And it was counted for him for righteousness. Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed. And said in his heart, he didn't dare say it with his mouth, Shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? I am a hundred years old. And shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? Hebrews 11 and Romans 4 and Genesis 17 says this is impossible. And you need to get this because I can never get that. Zacharias is going to have a moment with the angel that he's not going to believe it. And he's going to be literally shut up for nine months. Not just a little bit longer. And Abraham said unto God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before me. And God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac, which means laughter. Twenty-one five, Genesis twenty-one five. I mean, what, what do you think? What if God came down to a 75-year-old woman? Sarah is 90 years old. Abraham, 100. Verse 5, 21-5. And Abraham was 100 years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. And Sarah said, God has made me to laugh so that all that hear will laugh with me. <laughs> what would you, would you name that boy Isaac for? <laughs> because I laughed at God. <laughs> Be not deceived, God's not mocked. Whatsoever I sow, I'm going to have to reap. Every time I call that boy, I'm going to think about when I laughed at God. And she said, who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah should have given child suck? For I have borne him a son in his old age. So we see, back to, back to Luke chapter 1. We see here. Verse 7, and they had no child because Elizabeth was barren, and they were both were now well stricken in age, or years, excuse me. And it becomes a reproach. Look at verse 24 and 25. 
And after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived, being old, and hid herself five months, saying, Thus has the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he looked upon me to take away my reproach from among men. It was a reproach. Here I am, this old lady, I'm having a baby. But you see, or don't you see, Abraham and Sarah. Abraham and Sarah through Isaac started the Jewish race of people. It goes Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the 12 tribes. Well, now we have Zacharias and we have Elizabeth who are the same situation as Abraham and Sarah, and now they're going to have a boy. And their boy is going to be the forerunner of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Jews should have seen that in John the Baptist. That's John the Baptist. He is the same thing as Isaac. He was born of parents that could not have any children because of age. Something's going on here. Better go get the scrolls. We better start reading because something weird has just happened. When was the last time you read in the Bible that two old people who were unable to have a child had a child by God? You run all the way back to Abraham and Sarah, and that's it. You mean to tell me that here are two people in the priest, he's in the holy place, and it doesn't dawn on them that here are two old people? It does not bring up history? It doesn't ring their bells that something's going on here? And Luke begins the story of the Lord Jesus Christ, the forerunner. He begins it in the holy place. Isn't that interesting? Where the lamp, well, we'll get into that afterwards. So you see where we stand. One Verse 8. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, what does that tell you? What office does it hold? It holds the priest's office. John the Baptist was of Levi. His father was a priest. Not only a Levite, but a priest. Now, you're going to run into a situation here. And I'm learning so much that are not in my notes. I just made this do these recordings, have someone type them out later, pay someone to do it, but... Who did Jesus say John the Baptist would have been had they believed Jesus and received him? He would have been Elijah. Elijah represents who? The prophets. Here is a priest inscribed, scribe, in charge of the law who was a priest, and had the nation of Israel received Christ the Messiah, this priest would also would have became a prophet. Do you know who visited Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration? Moses the law and Elijah the prophets. You know why those two didn't show I mean, you? You know why those two showed up? Because they rejected John the Baptist and Jesus. Do you realize the whole Bible would have been different if the Jews had received Christ as their Savior?
Jesus says about this man that's going to be born is not born yet, but we're, we're getting ahead of ourselves. He said, this is greater than any man that's been born of a woman. And it speaks about him in Isaiah 39 being the forerunner of the Lord Jesus Christ. All priests were Levites, but not all Levites were priests. His father is in the holy place. That makes him a priest. He just wasn't a Levite. See, if you weren't of the of the priest Levites, the Levites would still tend the tabernacle. They were still, you know, they were the ones that counted the treasure. They were the ones probably maybe cleaned the altar or bring the water or whatever jobs were. But they were not the priests. They were not the ones that did the sacrifice. The priests, I mean, the Levites would also teach the people. So John the Baptist is a priest, according to his father. And it came to pass that while he executed, that means done and accomplished. So, not only were they blameless and righteous, verse 6. The word that the Holy Spirit uses in verse 8, executed, means done or accomplished. That means that Zacharias did everything he was supposed to according to law and finished. What he was doing was he was finished in the holy place. We're going to read that the people are out there like, what's going on here? What's taking him forever? Why is he late? He was already done. Executed the priest's office before God. Well, that's literal. How do you take that literal? Because between where the, we're going to see where the where the altar of incense he is standing, right by that altar of incense was a veil, and right behind that veil was God. So when it says before God, he is standing right before God with only the veil between him and God. By the way, that same veil that Christ will rent from top to bottom. And the Bible doesn't record but you ever wonder if it was Zacharias that walked in there to do his ministration when he something's wrong in this picture I have been in this thing every time I'm supposed to be and there's the ark I wonder who saw that 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 veil rent. Who walked in there and said, "We are in trouble." And then there were some priests that got the sewing thread. Why did they get the sewing thread? Why did they why did they mend it? No one else was supposed to see it, but the priest. Now, the priest, Exodus 27, 21. Exodus 27, 21. I mean, you, you ever think about that one priest that walked in there? Oh, boy. You know, the high priest wore bells. They didn't tie a rope about it. You don't see that anywhere. They wore bells, and when they heard those bells dingling and ringing, they knew that the priest was still alive. You know, Abihu and his brother, Nahab and Abihu, went in there with, with a strange fire, and the Lord lit them on fire. I don't want to get into that rope and all that, but that's, that's not Bible, rope. But here is a priest walking in, and all of a sudden, boom. The veil is rent. 
I said 27-21. In the tabernacle. All right, this will be the temple now. No more the, 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 the goat skins and the badger skins. It, it's the, the stone walls. But in the tabernacle of the congregation without the veil. It means on the other side of the veil. Which is before the testimony. The ark. Aaron and his son shall order it from even to morning before the Lord. Now we're talking about the oil for the light. It shall be a statute forever unto their generations on the behalf of the children of Israel. Only Aaron and his sons can go in there and they're talking about trimming the lamp. No one else is to be in there. Yeah, this is you got to get this because this is very important. Because what the next thing we're going to look at is going to ruin the myth and teachings and traditions. Only Aaron and his sons. So again, I am never going to remember that guy's name. John the Baptist's father is a son of Aaron to be in the holy place. Has to be. But I want you to get this now. I want you to get only Aaron and his son can be in there. I want you to get that. I want you to ascribe that to your head and in your heart. Only Aaron and his son. So we'll get it again. In 28.1. Exodus 28.1. And take thou unto thee Aaron thy brother, talking to Moses, and his sons with him from among the children of Israel, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. Even Aaron, Nahab, and Abihu, they haven't become the match boys yet. Eliezer, Ithamar, Aaron's sons. All right. Again, I want you to get this. Only Aaron and his sons. Nahab and Abihu, they're gone pretty soon. Eleazar, Ithar, Aaron's sons. And if you go on, you'll read about the garments of the high priest that we talked about. We're not going to get into that. 2944. Three times I want you to get this. I want you to know this. I want you to understand. And I will sanctify the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar. I will sanctify also both Aaron and his sons to minister to me in the priest's office. I want you to get that. I want you to know that. And we find Zacharias, he got his name right. He is ministering before God as we have seen. He is of the sons of Aaron. He is allowed to be there. He is standing before God. With only separation between him and God is the veil. That is it. Maybe get one more verse. Luke 1 9. Man, we're not even going to finish this one. There's a lot of... Luke 1 9. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to jump ahead a little bit because I want you to get this. Verse 11. We're going to jump to 11 real quick. I want you to get this. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. Who was allowed in that in that room? Aaron. Only Aaron and his sons. Here comes an angel of the Lord. And when Zechariah saw him, we'll get into the him later, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. Now, why is Zacharias afraid? Here is somebody that's in the holy place that does not belong here. He's not a priest. Don't tell me Zacharias doesn't know who the priests are. Uh, and then 
the, the, the angel just shows up. Here he is. You're not supposed to be here. And you're a man. This angel has no wings. If he had wings, then Zachariah said, well, you must be of God. <laughs> He's troubled because only one of us needs to be in this room, and it has to be Aaron and his sons, and I don't know who you are, but, buddy, you need to get out of here. That's what he's afraid of. Because they are inside the temple still. Now back to verse number 9. According to the custom of the priest's office. Now, see that? Priest, 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 priest. Do you know that when you read in the Gospels, you are still under the law? Jesus healed the leprous man one time. What did he tell him to do? Go to the priest and offer what Moses offered. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's say you are in a country where there's leprosy, and a man does get sick, gets cured of that leprosy. Are you going to tell them, according to the Gospels, go do what the priest? No. We are under the law. We are under the Levite priesthood still. You got to get that. The Gospels are not written to church age people. They are written to the Jews under law. That's why we're not studying Matthew. That's why we're studying Luke. Everybody in the church runs to Matthew. But that's not for us. Now we're going to study Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John together. But there is no priest office. Unless, unless you belong to a particular religion that wants you in the Old Testament. And does not, how many Jewish people had a copy of the law with them? Where they can hold the law in their lap and read it? None. What church has priests and don't want you to have the copy of the Bible? Gee, that's interesting. According to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. Now, we're going to get much on this. There's 23 words in this verse. And I think we're not even going to, we're not even going to go any further here. We're going to learn of what Zacharias is doing, what it represents, and we've got to look at it as a fact is this is happening even before Jesus Christ is conceived in Mary's womb. Mary hasn't even begun to know what's going on. Mary's walking around just being your typical Jewish clean girl. And here we are in the holy place dealing with a guy who is old and his wife is old. So what? Who cares? Running back to Abraham, Isaac, and he, 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 he's burning incense. So what? I know people burn incense in their religion. I know people burn incense because they're smoking dope and they don't want anybody else to smell it. I know some people burn incense because their litter box stinks. Oh, wait till you get to this incense. Wait till you get to study what's going on with the incense before Jesus Christ. What Zacharias is doing among the people. You know Zacharias is a uh, precursor to the precursor of Jesus Christ. And we're going to see what's happening among the people in Zacharias about his boy, which is going to proclaim the Savior is, is here. And we're going to stop right now and leave that as that. That only the priest could be there. Only the priest could be due. It's about the priest. We are still in the Old Testament. Oh, what wonderful things we learn when we open the Bible and read and study and understand what God has for the riches. That's why the Bible says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word. How many times have you read through this and said, 
you know, oh, he, he, and you didn't think the where he was. You didn't think what he was doing. You didn't have an idea that no one else was supposed to be in there. And boom, here comes this guy. You ever wonder why he feared? We're under Roman rulership. <laughs> You know, when Jesus comes, maybe we'll be under Roman rulership. And maybe the nation of Israel will be praying in Salopetra. Sure ain't going to be praying the temple because they're going to lose their necks there. You know that this temple was designed. Well, not this. I think that. I'm sorry. Excuse me. This, this, this temple was rebuilt and was, was modified by Herod. You know the Antichrist under Rome is going to have something to do with the next temple? I guarantee, I bet you what's going on with Zacharias with his incense will be going on before Jesus comes. Thank you.